Craig's been out doing a bit of tanking with it. Usually they can't get the cat back in. Good deep storage bin there. Go away, Siri. Right, guys, good morning. Welcome back to the channel for a new video. Today, we've got this thing here. It's the John Deere 6120M. It's come from Masons and Kings, who are John Deere dealers on demo. It actually came on Friday last week, today's Monday. Um, Craig's been out doing a bit of tanking with it. And this morning I thought I'd put it on the feeder wagon and see how it goes. It's a very similar size and shape tractor to that 5S Massey we had. We might as well let it do the same job and see how it gets on. Have a quick walk around it now, and then when I'm actually doing the feeding, I will uh, take you on the inside and show you all around it. It's got the brackets for a loader, and the loader is here, but we just asked the guys to take it off. Um, the headstock of the loader doesn't fit any of our attachments. We thought we might as well take it off, it's out of the way. Yeah, here it is. One thing that Craig noticed immediately, um, especially for tanking and doing the feeder wagon, is it's got the holes for the PTO button, but it's not actually got the PTO on off on the back. If you ever watch my TikTok lives, Whenever I go to turn the wagon off for feeding, obviously we have this screen here that we have to put round and back. And when I'm doing this with the screen, I'm stood right next to the power shaft. So what I normally do is when I approach the tractor, I turn the button off there to stop the power shaft, and then put the screen whatever way I want it. But, um, yeah, the buttons, the buttons not missing. I thought they were standard, but apparently not. Um, but yeah, we're going to do some feeding. Um, I'll uh, come back to you when I'm on the inside. Right, so our first mix is done. John's on bedding up, he's got a couple more bales to do. See we've got a flood in the wash bay. It is incredibly windy today. Yeah, so normally I would come along and press the stop button there. But we'll be careful. I'm alright, I've got long arms, I can reach without getting anywhere near it. But, um, I don't know why the button's not there. Right, let's turn this off there and there. I'll give you a little brief tour of the cab. Everything's on that pillar now in terms of a dashboard. There's nothing down here in front of the steering wheel anymore, which is nice. I like that. That's um, that's good. Uh, the forward and reverse, I'll show you in a minute, doesn't click in anymore. I think because you can change it on here on the loader stick. Uh, this is an auto quad, so everyone knows what an auto quad's like. And yeah, this, you put it in forwards. There's no click, just returns to neutral. You see here it says we're in F1, so we're, we're in forwards. But you can press the button here, which is a forward and backwards button on the joystick, and it'll swap us into reverse. If I press it again, back into forwards. It's very really handy with the loader. Um, and you've got a uh, rabbit and tortoise there for your, your gears. You've got a couple spools down here, so brown does your pickup hitch. Um, Blue is what the wagon is plumbed into, so that's what we need. If you've been in a 30 series cab, this is all pretty familiar. Um, obviously the electric spools instead of manual. It's got a couple of USB charge points, which is nice. You can never have enough of those, or I can't get the cap back in. Uh, and an auxiliary there for, I guess, the radio, which is up here. I believe it's a Bluetooth radio now, which would be nice if it is. That's your rear wiper up there, apparently. What's this one? That's your front one. Behind the uh, control box here, you've got all your buttons. So yeah, you've got Bluetooth, your fan settings, um, four wheel drive, diff lock. Down here, you've got your lights. So we currently got the work lights on, which I shouldn't have turned off because now I've got to go and turn. Oh, the box does come straight on. Um, and then a button here. So when you put the power shaft in gear, when you get out to load the wagon like I did, you've got to press that button there so that the shaft keeps going whilst you're not in the seat. Uh, and then you've got your beacons. Not going to be working the tractor particularly hard here. It's just on the feed wagon, a bit like we had with the Fergie. Um, so it's 120 horsepower. I believe the M series Diz now boost. So before it was um, a known thing that the M series didn't have a boost, but I believe they now do. So I'm not sure. So don't quote me, but I believe they are sitting around 140 horsepower with the boost. Whereas our 130 that we have. Um, that doesn't boost, that is just 130 horsepower all the time. Craig had this tractor on our uh, 
um, slurry tanker on Friday. We've been over to Rowland, the other farm, and done a couple loads of uh, dirty water. And brought it all back here to our big covered pit that we've got. And he was uh, pleasantly surprised, I believe he said, but how well it pulled the tanker full up the hill towards the farm. It does seem quite a gutsy little tractor. It's incredibly nimble. The uh, turning circle on it is very sharp. It's nice being able to just toggle between forwards and backwards on this joystick here. That is handy. I said before Christmas in some of the videos and also in the um, first video back after New Year that we had several demos coming. But this wasn't actually one of them. This was a um, one that sort of came out of the blue. Brad, our salesman, rang Craig up and said, look, we've got this tractor, it's going to another demo, you're sort of in between. Would you like to have it for a few days? We were like, yes, of course we would. I think it was brand spanking new when it came, it had six hours on, it's now got eight and a half. So we're just about to start our second mix, so we put the power shaft in gear, go through the window, make sure everything's turning, give it some revolutions. And like I said, we've got to press this little yellow button here. That light comes on. It says the lock's on. And then I can exit the vehicle. Still got the old tried and tested John Deere swivel seat. I don't think they'll ever get rid of that. I'll do another mix. We'll see you in a minute. reckon so far let me know down in the comments if you like the styling of the tractor one thing i'm not so keen on is the round headlights going back i really like the ones that are on the r series um and i just think tractors should be led lights are standard now really good toolbox as well they've, they've, they've made them different and with a handle and they're just better than the old ones we've got another mix to do in a minute but i'm gonna have a cup of coffee first um and then i'll show you the loader as well that come with it that mix uh, all loaded we just give it a couple of minutes to mix all the minerals in we're on top of one of our silage pits the one we're feeding out of we're getting back through it now there's two bays left of silage at the back i need to pull back the sheet today but there's a pallet on there full of sandbags um that i need somebody to guide me into otherwise we're going to stab a hole in the sheet but yeah we're getting through it still got a lot of straw which is good you see how wet the yard is we had a lot of rain over the weekend Let's go feed this out, and uh, I'll try and do that sheet then. Right, I've just um, finished, what was this, my fourth mix of the day in this tractor. I don't think blue light is flashing at me, so we better go put some blue in. But I've found another thing I quite like, and I'll show you when we pull up outside the workshop. And then I promise I will take you to see the loader. I'm just going to pull up here in front of the workshop. Hear that? Silence. Anyone that drives a John Deere with an auto quad box like this, especially on the new ones, will know if you put that into park, the wrong way round in a sequence. So if you put this into park before putting this into neutral, or the other way round, I can't remember what way it is, if you do it in the wrong sequence, you get an error code and it bleeps at you for ages and ages and ages. And um, it's very, very annoying. It's the same with the direct drive on a 155. If you put it in park, um, too quick after putting it into neutral it'll bleep at you and throw up an error code and it's nice that you can do that without it bleeping at you and setting off all the screens oh thank you siri so yeah i like that there's obviously a cup holder there there's a good deep storage bin there go away siri but all the vents same as on the uh, k1 
current um, M and R cabs. And yeah, it's just a very nice place to be in here. One thing I don't like is why is that got to be moved down to there? You can't really see from the seating position when 540 neutral eco and a thousand all is. Whereas there's loads of room up here. Look, there's all this blank space. I'd rather have the PTO gear lever up here rather than a cup holder. Um, ours is on there on our 130. And why they've got to move that down there, I don't really know. It would make much more sense to be up there. All right, well, there she is. Gonna take her off the wagon a minute. I put some ad blue in because it was flashing. So we're gonna drop it off the wagon. Put big boots back on because big boots is now back in action. What a tractor that is, look. Four. Anyway, here is the loader. So it's a 603M. I don't really know what that means, um, but it's a pretty basic loader. I think it's got, is it manual locking? Yes, it's got a manual lock on the pin, which is there. So you pull that out. And then when you put something on the front, you slide it back across. Um, the nice thing about this one, which we have on our others as well, is the block. So you just have one thing to put on, pull the handle down. And that's it. Right, I have uh, just unplumbed everything off of this feeder wagon. Take the tractor off. I do like the um, forward and reverse shuttle on this, where it returns to neutral. So lift that back up, listen for the click. There it is. I think I said earlier on, the turning circle is incredible. The wheels tilt, like um, people that have been around deers a long time will know. Well, what we'll do is we'll go and park it up in front of its loader so that when the guys come tomorrow to get it, it's all, um, it's all there ready and waiting for them. I won't actually hook on the loader because I haven't been shown how to do it. I wouldn't want to do it wrong, so we'll let them figure that out. Power off. But thank you guys very much for watching today's video. Thank you to Mason for letting us have a go with this tractor uh, for a couple days. It's always nice to have a go on a demo machine. We're off to Lama tomorrow, but the video won't be out until after we get back. So thank you to everyone that come and saw us at Lama and said hello and whatever. Um, I've never been, so I'm really looking forward to it. Hopefully we've had a good time. This is a bit weird trying to speculate how it's going to go. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, then please do. We just hit 12,000 subs yesterday, which is awesome. So thank you to everyone who has been subscribing recently. I hope everyone enjoyed the Farm Flicks um, video that went out on Sunday. Um, gave a really in-depth view as to what goes on here at Northwick. I will see you guys on another video very soon. Cheerio.